say viscera? What muscle are you telling me is being controlled? Smooth. Cardiac. Because even though, if you remember, one of the things that I said, the cardiac is innervated, but it does not depend. Did I get a message? Yeah. Okay. It does not depend on the autonomic nervous system for control. It sets. It, it's its own thing for the heart. However, the ANS innervation can affect it. Now, can the ANS affect skeletal muscle in any way? Well, if you remember, for the ANS, two divisions, sympathetic, parasympathetic. Sympathetic is going to do what for the skeletal muscle? My fight or flight increasing. Well, my heart rate will increase, but now if I'm referring to the skeletal muscle, the blood flow. Okay? I'm increasing the blood flow to the skeletal muscle. Even though that's affecting skeletal muscle, it is done with smooth muscle because those are my blood vessels. Does that make sense? So we, we talked about that. You guys remember us talking about the blood flow? Is it, okay, so see, I'll be either answering these directly or I'll be answering them in the PowerPoint and the flat the book is a good background. So what effect do fibers from the autonomic nervous system have in some of the above areas? First of all, take each question apart. What effects do Fibers. Remember, that's referring to their axon. That's referring to their axons that are going to meet their target cells. So, what effects do those fibers have on some of these areas? You just told me. If it's sympathetic, it's fight or flight. I've got to increase, therefore I'd be increasing heart rate, I would be increasing blood flow. Do you see where I'm going with this? The next one, the visceral reflex. Where's my mouth? It's an arc. Do what, Brian? No, I mean, then it's just an added reflex. Okay, the term you just used, component. We still need a receptor. We still need an integration center. And I still need an effector. The difference is, I'm talking about the inside of the body now. So your receptor is most likely going to be somewhere in the brain. For example, the brain stem, monitoring respiration rate, heart rate, blood flow. And then my integration center, once again, areas within the brain. And then to do the effect, it just depends on whether I'm talking about the sympathetic or the parasympathetic. The effectors, okay, for the most part, whether sympathetic or parasympathetic, are going to what areas of my body? The effectors are what? Huh? 
my organ. Because this is a system whose effects go to smooth or cardiac muscle. If it's sympathetic, fight or flight. Parasympathetic, calm it down. Okay? So up to the point where we are now. Anybody been working on this as we've been covering the topic? One hand. Two. Three. Okay. Maybe a third of my class. So once again, even though test scores, test scores could have been a lot better <clears throat> because I have provided you with what you need. I can't make you utilize what I've given you, but I have provided it. So at this point, the, where we are, okay, we have left off at the point of the enteric nervous system. That was the point that we had pretty much left off at because we had mentioned um, the Hirschsprung disease and so forth. And if you think about the point where we left off, okay, we mentioned that this, these two divisions Parasympathetic, sympathetic, they are actually working together because even though it looks like they are in opposition, they're actually using that opposition to keep us in the homeostasis that we need. So that was pretty much the point where we left off, okay? I left off at this point mainly because neurotransmitters. Now, take a peek back at your study guide, okay? I'm now going to look at these muscarinic, I'm going to look at these nicotinic, I'm going to look at dual control, all right? Um, Atropine, I may not actually get into that in the actual PowerPoint, but does everybody know what that is? Brian, what is it? Um, I just know that it's used as an eye drop to dilate the eyes. <laughs> True. Yeah, so and that allows like the eye doctors to be able to look in and yeah. view the eye and that sort of thing. So if it's dilated, the pupils, would that be sympathetic or parasympathetic? <laughs> sympathetic. Okay? Because that is making those pupils dilate to let more light in, which is what happens during the sympathetic response. So, um, which system? I answered that. Do you guys remember? which system has longer lasting effect? Parasympathetic or sympathetic? Sympathetic. sympathetic. Why? And I explained why. It takes longer to bring the body back down to homeostasis because you're flooded with the hormones and chemicals. You're flooded with the chemical that is a hormone. Do you happen to remember where that hormone came from, what um, organ, my adrenal gland, what portion of it, the cortex or the medulla, the medulla, why? Marlisha? It is a direct synapse of that pre-ganglionic fiber on those medulla cells which are modified sympathetic cells. You guys remember that? Okay. Um, 
Um, so we talked about that one. This one we're going to look at. That one we're going to look at. Okay, I've answered this one several times. What areas of the brain are the control centers? What is the major control center of the, the parts of the brain for the autonomic nervous system? Brain stem. Does not mean that we don't have other areas involved. But the major one is the brain stem. Um, do, 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 do. do you guys remember what a splanchnic nerve is? What is it? Uh, when they, kind of, they make that curve and then they come out of the um, they have a chain and then they go along the splanchnic nerve to the to those collateral ganglia. Yeah. It's the nerve that's leading to the collateral ganglia. So in other words, that pre-fiber does not synapse in the chain. It synapses at that collateral ganglia. So the nerve that will take the fibers to a collateral ganglia, how many of them were there? Three. Okay, and that's going to take it to that collateral ganglia to synapse before going from the post to the target organ. Okay, um, symptoms of fight or flight. Well, we've mentioned this several um, times. Respiration. Increase in the, in the respiration, increase in the heart rate, increase in the blood flow. All this stuff that's getting the body pumped up. Okay, so pretty much everything I've answered. So now let's go back, okay, to the point. All right, we're going to look at this, we're going to look at these, look at these. Um, so pretty much these right here, okay, are what we're going to be looking at now. If you have a question about it, ask me, okay, in relationship to that. So how about this? Why don't we make a plan and you got to print this, like for chapter 16, the one that I've got posted. Why don't you go in, make spaces before the next class, which will be next Thursday, okay, um, to go in, make spaces in between each of the questions and bring that with you. So that as we're talking, if you see something on it and that uh, associated to that topic, and you're not sure, you can ask me. Okay? Well, those of you who want to really pass my class and do well. Okay? I'm not telling you that you have to. I'm saying if you, you know, just use it as a plan of action. Okay. So let's take a peek at these neurotransmitters. Now, when we think about a neurotransmitter, at this point, for the most for the for the most part, which I've tried to point out, there are different cell types. But for a neuron, okay, let's still go with our idea of that nerve cell body, our little dendrite, the axon, and those little terminal ends. Okay? In looking at this cell, okay, remember, we've got that great big huge nucleus because for these cells, they're stuck in G0, meaning they don't duplicate, okay? They don't make another cell, all right? They are only concerned with making their product. And because in the nucleus we have our DNA, which will contain G, 